Good afternoon. I'm Sarah Crom, the Senior Transportation Planner with the Space Coast Transportation Planning Organization. And welcome to our Trail Talk webinar as part of this year's Mobility Week. We are very happy that everyone is able to join us and today and um, learn a little bit about some of the trails in Brevard. So, okay. Trying to, sorry, I apologize, technical difficulty there. Um, so today, basically what we wanted to do is highlight three of our showcase trails. If you are familiar with Brevard County, you know that there are multiple trails throughout the county, either maintained by a city or the county, or also various um, environmental agencies. And so you can pretty much, if you, you can find any a trail in any town in Brevard County. So instead of focusing on all of them, we chose three of our showcase trails to tell you a little bit about today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each of those three trails. And then we're joined by Angelica Keene, who will be telling us a little bit about health and safety along the trails. Before we get started, I am going to give you guys a little go-to briefing here. I know most of us are used to living in the virtual meeting world, but just in case you are new to go-to webinar, you should have a control box that looks a little bit like the one displayed on the left-hand side of this slide. And on that control box, there is a control panel where you are able to mute and unmute yourself. Right now, all participants are muted in order to reduce background noises. And if you have any questions or comments throughout the webinar, you are welcome to put them in the question box and we have staff that will be monitoring that throughout the webinar. Just a friendly reminder that today's webinar is being recorded and will be later distributed and posted on our website. All right. So the first trail that I would like to tell you guys a little bit about today is the Florida East Central Regional Rail Trail. And I'm going to start off by showing a video. If you can just give me one second, pull it up. Once a historic abandoned rail line, the East Central Florida Regional Rail Trail is now a transformed 12-foot multi-use path. The trail also includes a section of an eight-foot equestrian trail. The rail trail travels through downtown Titusville into the urban area of US-1, crosses the suburban area of Minns, and then takes a turn into the Florida wilderness as it segues into Volusia County. Not only does this trail serve as a great source of recreation and exercise, but it is also a safe route to Mims Elementary School for student walkers and bicyclists. The rail trail is also a part of a larger regional trail network, including the Coast to Coast Trail and the St. John's River to Sea Loop. So visit the trail today. For more information, go to www.brevardparks.com. All right. So that's just a little highlight and clip of what we are going to be talking about. So basically at the end of today's presentation, I hope that you are inspired to go out and explore one of these three trails, or if you're not here in Brevard, a trail close to you. All right, so the East Central Florida Regional Rail Trail is part of three regional trail networks. The first is the Coast to Coast Trail, which is a 250 mile trail that stretches from Titusville all the way across to St. Petersburg, or it will once it's completed. It will be a 250 mile trail that will be multi-use, so accommodating both pedestrians and bicyclists, as well as portions such as our section of, a section of our coast to coast will accommodate equestrians as well. It's also part of the St. John's River to Sea Loop, and that is a 260 mile trail that basically we are the southern loop to it the little southern U that basically makes it where you can loop back up either along the coast or through the inland area along the St. John's River Basin. And then finally, the largest trail that this section of trail is part of is the East Coast Greenway, which is a 3,000 mile trail that goes from Calais, Maine all the way to, the, to Key West. So a huge endeavor for regional trails. 
And you can see that's where we are, that yellow box is where we are in the big picture. And then when you zoom in on Florida, that's where we are. So just to give you a little bit of an idea of what those trails look like all together, we have the St. John's River to Sea Loop, the Coast to Coast Trail, and then on the East Coast Greenway. So the East Central Florida Regional Rail Trail is an incredibly important trail just from the regional perspective alone. But it's so much more than that. It's a community trail as well. So we do, we commonly refer to it as the rail trail. So if you ever hear people around Titusville or Space Coast TPO talking about the rail trail, that's what we're referring to, even though it obviously has all these other names. It is 16.2 miles completed. However, only 12.4 of that is actually rail trail. The rest is just sections of the coast to coast and a cohesive section at that. It has walking, biking throughout the 16.2 miles. And then our most northern section from Arantia Road, which I'll pull up a map in a little bit and show you where that is, to the Volusia County line is 5.4 miles of equestrian trail. There is also a pedestrian bridge, which I thought this was something unique to call off. And because it's definitely a nice view, it's a unique aspect along this section of the coast to coast trail the, and the regional trails, but also just for the community at large is basically when you're driving into Titusville, you're able to see this pedestrian bridge and it draws your attention and it very clearly makes you realize you're entering a trail town. It's the Eastern Florida Regional Rail Trail is maintained by Titusville and Brevard County. <clears throat> a little bit of history and more is the Florida East, Co it is along the Florida East Coast Railway, which I like to say that this trail is hundreds of years in the making because in 1885 was when the Florida East Coast Railway was built through Brevard County and then it was discontinued use in 1960. So I mean just that alone is 60 years old and then later in 2006 it was actually purchased by Florida Department of Environmental Protection and leased back to Brevard County and Titusville in 2008. So it definitely has a very long history. We're really excited to be part of it. And I mean, this was an idea before I think I was an idea. <laughs> so, um, or certainly, you know, Space Coast CPO was involved for a very long time. Um, Titusville is Brevard's first trail town. It was also the state's second trail town that is an official designation by the Florida Greenways and Trails system. And so Titusville has really embraced this trail and this idea of regional trails to build themselves into a trail town. And so they've installed wayfinding, which you'll see a picture of coming up. Um, they've created various programs to create bike friendly businesses along the way, as well as also participated in multiple of large event rides throughout it. This trail really couldn't have been done or completed without partnerships. And we'll continue to be all about partnerships as we finish the last section of the Coast to Coast Trail and further move into the, the other two regional trails and the completion of those. So on the screen, you can just see just some of the partners that have been able to make the rail trail a possibility. <clears throat> so if what if you wanna go on the rail trail? Well, there's like, there's six easy places for you to access the rail trail. This is our most accessible trail. And that would be a, starting from north going southwest, uh, excuse me, southeast would be a rancher road. This is a, um, it's a trailhead for both equestrians, spikers and pedestrians. So, and it is also probably the most wilderness quote unquote section of the trail. And so you really are headed off into untouched scrub and, and, and um, highland habitats through that area. Chain of Lakes Park, which also has a nice trail all of its own, is another good trailhead. Dre Park, which is a um, stormwater park, so it also has a really nice trail around the stormwater system, but you can also easily access the access the trail and that's right by the pedestrian bridge. Sandpoint Park, the trail runs right next to, and then Parish Park, is a trailhead, but actually in the, in the coming years, it's going to be established as a more formalized trailhead through a federal lands access program grant that's currently underway. So destinations, 
So what, what can you see along the rail trail? Well, one, you obviously have the opportunity to encounter Florida wildlife, other cyclists and pedestrians, make friends, that sort of thing. But also um, there is a, there's a brewery, Playlanda Brewery, an amazing downtown area that has some very lovely restaurants and coffee shops and um, Sunrise Bakery is one of my favorite spots to hit up there. The T Titusville area, Chamber of Commerce, as well as also the CRA in the downtown area has established some really nice event spaces. So the Titusville Chamber holds quite a few events as well as also there's a welcome center. As I mentioned, they have developed wayfinding signage. This is also a picture of um, Space View Park, which is along the trail, is I think that this is probably the only trail in the world that you could cross an intercoastal waterway, go through scrub habitat, and also potentially see a rocket launch from. And then finally, of course, as I mentioned, the intercoastal waterway. So you do cross the Indian River Lagoon, which has breathtaking sunrise and sunsets. So what does the future for the rail trail look like? So currently we're working on finishing the last connection to it, the Space Coast Trail project, which is under design. Construction will be letting in December, 2021. And that'll basically fill in this last little section that runs from Maryland National Wildlife Refuge boundary to the Atlantic Ocean. And so that will be finishing the last section of the Coast to Coast Trail. So obviously we then need to continue to pursue the River to Sea Loop and the East Coast Greenway through this area connections as well. We also later this year, early next year, we'll begin scoping for the North Brevard Wayfinding Plan. So I have these three, three logos up on this slide. And as we saw there, all of these trails interconnect and overlay. And so how do you create a signage and wayfinding plan that actually effectively communicates which regional trail you're on, where along that regional trail you are, and combining these three logos in an aesthetically pleasing way? So that will be what that project will focus on. All right, so moving on, we're gonna move now further to the south into the Vieira area. And this is one of my favorite trails. And um, something that's unique about this trail, before I show you guys our short video, is that it really is a community trail where anyone of any user group can really go out and enjoy it. Is whether you are a mother pushing a stroller or you are um, a senior citizen who just wants to get out and enjoy some fresh air, or you're an avid cyclist, this trail is perfect for you. So I'm going to show you guys our short video on the Brevard Zoo Linear Trail. The Brevard Zoo Linear Trail is a multi-use boardwalk and asphalt trail that runs from the zoo east along I-95 through wetlands and Okamics. The three mile long trail ends at Turtle Mound Road in Melbourne. Parking for the trail is located at the Brevard Zoo Trailhead. The trail is open from dawn to dusk and the best part, no admission fee. So grab your walking shoes or a bicycle, invite a friend. There's plenty of great stops along the way. Make sure to keep an eye out for wildlife sightings. So visit the trail today. For more information, go to www.brevardparks.com. All right. All right, so that was just a little clip on the Brevard Zoo Linear Trail. And moving along, some fast facts about it. It's 3.1 miles going from the Brevard Zoo to um, Turtle Mound, which I'll pull up a map here shortly. It includes walking and biking. It's partially a boardwalk, so you do get some really nice wetland views. I have personally seen raccoons and snapping turtles and alligators and wading birds out there. So it's almost like this little oasis right in the middle of kind of a highly populated area here in Brevard County. So it, um, it does include environmental education interpretive signage in the first mile close to the zoo. Something that's fun is you do pass behind the, not that you can tell what it is unless you know what it is, but 
um, you do pass behind the Sea Turtle Hospital at the Brevard Zoo along the trail. And this is maintained in partnership by Brevard County and the Brevard Zoo. And I would definitely say that it has the most diverse user groups out there. So if you would like to get on the Brevard Zoo Trail, how do you do it? Well, if you are going by car, you can park at the Brevard Zoo Trailhead. There is designated parking, a really nice little area there, a couple benches. You also, if you are going by bicycle or by feet, um, if you're a pedestrian, you can either access it Pineda, just south of I-95, or at Turtle Mound Road. So really, this is wild, where wild adventures await at the Brevard Zoo Trail, is you could enjoy a nice you know, walk along the trail and then, or a nice bike along the trail, and then go to the Brevard Zoo and feed giraffes or see meerkats or what have you. Um, you also, as I was mentioning, there's some really great wildlife sightings to see out there. It's just really an enjoyable place and definitely one of my favorite trails in Brevard County. Something that's also unique is if you really were a um, very comfortable cyclist is you could actually park at the Brevard Zoo and take your bike all the way out to Satellite Beach and actually go to the beach that way. So what is the future? So basically the future is to focus on continued connectivity both in Brevard County and regionally. And so ultimately what the vision would be is to create a loop that goes throughout central Brevard that connects to the zoo trail. And then recently the Space Coast TPO governing board and the Indian River MPO governing board have adopted a new regional connector Brevard and in, in Indian River Trail that we are working with Office of Greenways and Trails and as a region to hopefully get that trail being built up. So eventually you could, in theory, go all the way from the Brevard Zoo down into Indian River County. All right, so the last trail that I wanted to highlight, we're moving even further south now. And once again, all three of these trails are a little bit different. This one definitely has a little bit more of a rural feel than its location, but it's still an easier ride than I'd say the rail trail, but easy impact as the zoo trail. So let me pull up our Al Tuttle video for you. Named for a local resident and chief trail proponent, the Al Tuttle Trail is a 10-foot wide paved multi-use trail in South Brevard. You can access the trail from the Sand Hill Trailhead on Marie Street in Malabar. The trail meanders along the border of the Malabar Scrub Sanctuary and the Boundary Canal. The trailhead includes ADA parking and restrooms. It also includes the Town Connector Trail, a project within the town of Grant Valcaria. The Al Tuttle Trail is part of the proposed 22-mile South Brevard Linear Trail, which will connect various preserved lands within the communities of Malabar, Palm Bay, Grant Valcaria, and Mico. So visit the trail today. For more information, go to www.brevardparks.com. All right, so that's a, our quick video for the South Brevard Owl Tuttle Trail. So some fast facts about the Owl Tuttle Trail. So we, at the same with the rail trail, um, you know, we usually just refer to it as the Owl Tuttle. So if you ever hear us talking about that, we're not talking about the trail proponent. We are talking about the trail. And this trail includes biking, walking, and equestrian is down in that South Brevard area, it's actually a little bit of a horse area where there's quite a few equestrians and they definitely enjoy being able to take their horses out onto these trails because it gets them off of the road into a more safe, secure place where both the horse and the rider can be more comfortable. Um, it, and both the town of Malabar and the town of Grant Valcaria are very, very involved with their trails down there and they both have a greenways and trails um, committee that falls underneath their city, their town council. Malabar has actually applied to be a trail town as well. And so they were our second trail town in Brevard 
and I believe it was the fifth trail town in the state of Florida. So we're very proud to host two of the um, first trail towns that were designated in Brevard County. So if you would like to access the Owl Tuttle Trail, you can either do so by utilizing the Malabar Scrub Sanctuary slash the Malabar Community Park parking lot that would be located right off Malabar Road. But then they also have a designated trailhead at Marie Street. And I would like to draw attention to the Marie Street trailhead because it's definitely uni unique. Through um, a DEP grant, the town of Malabar was actually able to build ADA accessible bathrooms there. And um, they also, it includes a event pavilion, a area to tie up your horses, and it's just really a very well thought out and interesting trailhead. And we just love the fact that it creates, it helps make the trail ADA accessible. So destinations along the way is, as I mentioned, this is a much more rural area. And so you're really getting into more of that old Florida feel and that untouched habitat. Mal the town of Malabar boasts themselves as having the highest um, amount of protected lands to ratio to developed lands in Brevard County. So if you are unfamiliar with the Environmentally Endangered Lands Program, they have a number of sanctuaries that are right along the trail, as well as also the trail goes through the Malabar Scrub Sanctuary. So definitely an area to go not only hike the Owl Tuttle Trail, but also check out some of more wilderness unpaved trails as well. There's also Malabar Community Park, which is a lovely place to stop and have a picnic along the trail or take a look, or if you're hiking with kids or biking with kids, give them a chance to burn off some extra energy before getting in the car with the playground. And then there is a disc golf course down there. So the future of the Owl Tuttle Trail is we will be developing a South Brevard Trails master plan in the coming years. Um, two years ago, the town of Malabar submitted several trail projects for a list of project priorities. And so we kind of started, or we did start coordinating with Malabar and the city of Palm Bay to start trying to move those projects forward. Well, one of the snafus is that really the projects need to go through a feasibility study. So we thought, why don't we take a step back, develop a trail master plan, and also hone in on you know, one or two projects that are the first ones that we want to build down there um, and, and actually do a feasibility study through this master plan. So the master plan will essentially outline the full picture of what the South Brevard area trails will look like, a little bit more in depth than just our regular bike or our bike pen master plan. It will conduct a feasibility study on most likely these two projects pictured on the screen. And we'll also dive into creating a branding for the South Brevard Al Tuttle Trail. So those are the three trails that I wanted to highlight today. I hope that you know a little bit more about them and feel excited to possibly go out and hike, bike, or, or go for a horseback ride along one of them. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Angelica to help us get up and get active on our trails. Thank you, Sarah. My name is Angelica Keene and I work for the University of Florida Extension Office in Brevard County and I'm your um, community development agent. So I partner with Sarah to do a lot of things and one of the things is to bring health and resources to the community. So um, I thought this would be a great opportunity to kind of continue with what Sarah was talking about and hopefully her presentation inspired you to get up and get active and get moving. But if it didn't, um, today I want to cover just a few of the broad benefits of being physically active, especially outside and in nature, and we'll get more into that. So if we could go ahead and get rolling. Sarah, next slide, please. So as you know, physical activity is very key to health. You guys have heard, <clears throat> excuse me, um, most people have heard the benefits time and time again, that it helps control weight, reduce diabetes, but there's a larger component there. Your ability to be physically active determines your ability to function in everyday life. 
So I had the experience of learning this firsthand where I was out for surgery and there's a time my doctor told me that, you know, you use your abdominals more than you think, even walking. And he was very correct. And so it really got me thinking that the more I'm able to walk those distances or ride those bikes further or even horseback ride or whatever that may be, it really does improve my overall quality of health, whether it be physical, mental, and we'll get into each one. So these are just a few of the physical health benefits that come. One of the extra kind of like little notes to keep in mind is that bicycling is fantastic. And it is for two reasons. One, as you saw from Sarah's presentation, we have some great trails and opportunities within our community, but it's also a mode of transportation. So right now when we are all kind of stuck indoors a lot, um, you know, being told to social distance and everything, it's a great way to get your family active but do it in a way that also gets you to where you need to go. And the beauty of her trails that she highlighted is they also take you places. Like she talked about the zoo trail. You can bike it and then go to the zoo. The Titusville trail, um, real trail she talked about is also a safe route for the elementary school. So it does a double component. Um, the idea is that you have the opportunity to bridge your fitness with your environment and that's always a great thing so talking about mental health next slide please sarah thank you i wasn't sure if i got lost um so mental health mental health is one of those things that is kind of a conversation that is really starting to come to the forefront of people's um, awareness with this pandemic and physical activity is one of the best ways to help really support your mental health. We've always talked about those physical benefits, but mentally it, it instantly helps to reduce stress, improve your mood. Uh, there are a ton of studies that support that your confidence, your self-esteem, that even just your creativity and your cognitive function. There are a number of studies that talk about when you know we're sitting on these Zoom calls all day long, that our cognitive function, you know, after 20 minutes, we start to lose interest, we start to um, get distracted. But by getting up, moving around, stepping outside, it just really gets those juices flowing, that brain connected again. So it's a really a great avenue. Um, but when you take the exercise outside, you even get more benefits. There was a study um, out of the physiological medicine. And they talked about that, yes, physical activity is great, but when you take it into nature, and by nature, they mean anything in that green space. So any of these trails would be a fabulous way of getting into that green space. It actually tripled each one of these individual benefits that you see here on your screen. So it improved your mood even faster. If you're having that sense of depression, it's gonna increase it even more. Again, that cognitive function, it just really recharges that whole body in such a profound way. And so we really want you guys to have that opportunity, especially in our community, to get up, get active and get moving. So next slide, please. Now we are in Florida and even though today is a beautiful day outside, or at least I think it is, um, with a little bit of the cooler weather, heat is something that Floridians have to be concerned about year round. Other areas, if you're in a different area, maybe you need to be thinking about warm weather or snow or how to you know, keep from freezing, but that's not a concern here in Florida. Florida, we need to always be aware of not overheating. So there are a few tips and tricks to keep you hydrated. And the biggest thing is just being aware of what time of year it is. So summer, making sure that you're exercising very early or very late. Um, so it's the cooler temperatures. When the temperatures are nicer, around the whole day like putting that into where it fits into your schedule but the main thing there is that you're staying hydrated and hydration means consuming that water we yes gatorade is fantastic juices things like that are good too but water really does help to hydrate you faster so we want you drinking that especially when you're out and being active rather that be taking a water bottle with you as you go or as Sarah talked about, there are places with restrooms to refill them, things like that along the way. But just being mindful of how much water have you consumed and how much water do you plan to consume later in the day and how does that fit with your physical activity? 
And then last but not least is being aware of your pace. What you do, um, how fast you walk or how slow you walk can change based on how physically fit you are, how connected you are, and how like overarchingly hot or cold it is outside, both of those. I know Florida is kind of a joke to say it's cold, but it does happen every now and again, but mostly we have the heat to concern with. So that was just kind of a few quick minutes of reminding you of all of those wonderful benefits that you're getting with our community that has this great opportunity with the trails. You've got these trails, we're hoping you use them because of the facts around them, but also just these overall health, mental and physical benefits. So that's kind of just a quick overview I had today. And in the next slide, you'll have my contact information if you want more in-depth information about health, wellness, well-being, whatever that may be specifically. So thank you guys for joining me today. All right, so before we get into, I know we have at least one question. Um, before we get to that, thank you, Angelica, for joining us and giving us that other point of view in regards to trails. Is you know, I really hope that everyone's excited to get out and explore one of your trails. And, but of course, you know, please stay safe and stay hydrated. So, in case you are unfamiliar with Mobility Week, I just wanted to give you a little quick rundown that. Mobility Week is basically a celebration of multimodal options throughout your community. And so I just we just wanted to highlight just some of the other events that are happening throughout the week. And so thank you for joining us for our second Mobility Week event today for the Trail Talk. Um, but also I wanted to let you guys know about on Wednesday, November 4th, our very own Kim Smith and Abby Hemingway will be out on a one teaching about um, pedestrian safety along the RFBs and various crosswalks there. And um, also the, the Space Coast Area Transit will have multiple events going on this week. And then the final event for the Space, for the Space Coast TPO will be a Complete Streets chat. So if you want to learn more about our Complete Streets, this was a little highlight into our trails, but we also have Complete Streets throughout Brevard County that are another great place to get out, get active, and explore your community. And with that, we will open it up for questions. And this, I realized, isn't a trail picture, but this is um, basically what the Coast to Coast Trail, the, the final view will be. So you'll have um, be able to walk the Coast to Coast Trail or ride it and be on the beach where you actually see rocket launch pads, which, as I mentioned earlier, is the most, I really think is probably the most unique trail in, in the country. All right, so do we have any questions, Abby? We do, right now we only have one and it says, where can I find options to ride horses? I don't own one, but I'm interested. So um, there are vendors out there, both in North Brevard and South Brevard. Um, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head their names, um, you know, Angelica works with the 4-H, so she might be able to spit out some, some horse vendors names a little bit more, uh, quickly than I could. Um, but, um, that there, there's definitely vendors. I would suggest, you know, reaching out to the 4-H or, or, um, doing some Googling to find reputable vendors that will take you out on guided horse trails or something of that effect. We have another one. Um, it says, do any of these places allow legal metal detecting? I do not know. Um, I don't think that Brevard County has any kind of ordinance that restricts metal detecting. But, you know, I am not sure. I have never had that question before. So I'm going to definitely find out for myself and case it ever is asked again. That's all that I have in right now. All right, well, if we have no other questions, um, you know, definitely would encourage you to get out and explore trails, not just this week with Mobility Week, but all year round. And um, thanks everyone for joining us.